Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is entitled Jewish Philosophy, Shear number 11 of Sad Yigaon on the Trinity. In treatise number 2, chapters 5 and on, Rav Sad deals with uh, God, the Christians, and the Trinity. And uh, the question, of course, is how do we look at the Christianity? Is it pure Vodazara? Is it not considered Vodazara? The Rambam and Hechus uh, Vodazara and Hechus Malachim, Malachim, where he deals with the Shivas, we may know it doesn't differentiate. Can any halachot of uh, idolatry that there's certain leniencies uh, with a Gentile that for him to believe in God and another being, another mediator, intermediary, it would be alright for a non-Jew and it's only prohibited for a Jew. It doesn't differentiate. Simple uh, meaning would be that that he has to have pure monotheistic belief just like a Jew. However, there is a Tosfot in the Chorot on the very first Dav, Bet Amid Bet, where he does write the following. He does say that a Gentile, a certain Gentile's beliefs, he says, is not an idolatrous, because their goal, their das, uh, knowledge is regarding uh, the creator of the world. Yeah, but they join God's name with something else. He writes, uh, for you to do business with a Gentile, such a Gentile who then is going to go ahead and thank his his God, which is God plus a shituf with someone else, so maybe you're over Lifnaiva, causing him to stumble. In idolatry, he says, not the case. The Gentiles have Noahide laws and they do not have that violation of believing in God, the Creator, with some intermediary. Okay, and therefore we don't have the issue of the to the Gentile if we're not causing him to have pure monotheistic beliefs. If we do business, he's going to go thank his pagan God, so then we are violating Lif Naivir by causing him to do an Isra of, uh, of Avodazara. But over here, he, the Gentile, doesn't have that prohibition. He has a prohibition of idolatry, but to believe in God the Creator and an intermediary. Mediary, that is actually an idolatry. So it seems to be Machlokas in the Rishonim. Uh, did this Machlokas find its way into the Shulchan Aruch? It certainly did in several places. In Arachayim, uh, the Ramad brings down Kuf Nun Vav, where he talks about the fact that after you finish davening, then you go to the base medrash, you f- learn for a few good hours, and then you go to work. So in Kuf Nun Vav, when the Siman, after going to base medrash, talks about going to work, he writes, well, you have to make sure that you don't work in a place where you're going to have a Gentile partner who's an idolater and you're going to cause him to stumble. You're going to make him successful. He's going to thank his gods. So then the Ramah writes, Yesh Mekin should foot in Kutim. Now there is a leniency regarding a partnership with good Gentiles because why? Bismana Zeh, they're not, they are not swearing in tr- pure idolatry. Ah, but they mention something else besides a pure God. They are referring to God. Meaning God and another being. And that's not considered to be uh, idolatrous for a Gentile. So too in Yoridea Kuf Mem Zayin, the Ramah mentions a similar idea, and the Pitchei Tshuva brings down the different opinions on this topic. It brings down another view that says, absolutely not. There's no difference between a Gentile and a Jew. They must both must believe in pure monotheism. Uh, and that's it. While the Pitchei Tshuva himself does say there does seem to be some opinions, like Tosu that we mentioned in the Ramah, that do seem to imply that if he believes in the Creator, and plus an intermediary that it may not be defined as idolatry for the Gentile. Everyone agrees for the Jew, it certainly is. And the only machlokas is, is it a violation of the Noahide laws, which has two narrow ramifications. One, for the Noahide himself, is that considered to be idolatry? And two, a Jew doing business is going to cause him to thank his his uh, deity, his gods, is it considered to be lift naive to go ahead and give him uh, something to rejoice about and that he's going to be involved in idolatry. So that's just a little summary of the question whether Shituf is defined as idolatrous for Gentile or not. Shalom.